Right, so the weather outside is still a little bit damp and drizzly and we thought it's a perfect opportunity to make another rig for you lot. And what I want to talk about today is our finesse carbon slims, the really, really delicate, probably the most delicate float we make within the range, but for my maggot fishing. You know what I mean? Now's the perfect time, whether you're doing it winter, springy time in particular, or late autumn, maggots for carp and F1s. There's probably no better bait. You can be really aggressive, feel loads of bait, and catch everything, which is really, really important. So what I want to do today is make you a lot of rig. I mean, not something I do myself. I make this on the bank. We know I would do it. I have a piece of line on a winder with my float on, and I shot it perfectly for that peg on the bank. But obviously, people don't have that sort of time on their matches. So if you want to pre-make your rigs, this is exactly how I'm going to do it. I'm going to run through pretty much every single step with the little things that I think make a bit of a difference. So we're going to get straight on it. And as I say, we're on F1 Slims, or sorry, the Finesse Slims, the more delicate one. They have a carbon stem and a 1.5 mil hollow bristle. So still quite a versatile float. You're going to be able to see it. It's not a really delicate float that's going to get blown under by the wind, things like that. It's just a nice, robust, gets job done, maggoty, sometimes pellety, but mostly for me, maggoty type floats. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get straight into it. Yeah, what I want first, mainline. Yeah, I guess ask this question loads and loads. And with mainline, I want robustness. Yeah, there's very, very rarely these days that I go to a, a really light mainline for better presentation. Yes, it, it creates that without a doubt. I mean, I'd love to be able to use 012 on every single rig, but it just simply doesn't give you that durability when you're catching lots of fish, and in particular, commercial fishing for carp and uh, F1s. So I need to go heavier. Yeah, I need to go much heavier. In this case, I'm fishing five pound mainline still, but it's 016. So nice, still not too heavy, but doesn't get affected by the wind too much, but it has that robustness. It needs that durability to be able to catch loads of fish still. You know I mean, gone are the days of being able to use 012 all the way through like we used to do back in the day. Now I want something that, if anything, can make my rig last. I mean, by using a heavier main line, but not too heavy. It's at 015, 016, probably about right for all your, your nice style rigs. It doesn't create a too thick a line that gets caught in the wind too much. So you still get nice presentation with a, a light bristle, but again, that durability, absolutely massive. So that's what we're going with. Yeah, 016, if I can find the end of that, we are good to go. So I'm gonna chuck my float. In this case, I'm using a 0.4. Yeah, in that range, we do them from, what do we do? We do a 0.1, a 0.2, a 0.4, a 0.5, 0.75. It's a massive range, whatever you wanna do. Obviously, your float is dictated to, to your depth. But for a nice generic one, for spring sort of time, let me thread them on. For spring time, you're gonna be fishing in what? Three foot plus still on most occasions. So I find that a 0 0.4, 0 0.5, they're gonna cover pretty much everything. So just snip that nasty end off so we get a nice neat piece of line. And with this, I'm gonna put some of our, the black silicon on. And fussy me, I just like the black silicon for everything when it comes to carbon, so it blends in. And our silicon's a right funny one as well. It took us a long time to get it right. I wanted a silicon that's, what, what's the word? A very thin profile on my float stem. Yeah, I hated with a passion. Back in days with some silicons we used to use, that were big fat pieces of silicon that like hold your float up on the surface. Got rid of that completely. Our silicon is really, what, what's the word? It's a slim profile of it, it? That's what we're gonna go with. So it hugs my stem really, really, really close, meaning that my float cocks naturally instead of being held up by the silicon. So I've chopped up three pieces with the carbon stems. I think pretty much all the nice floats that we do, the, the finesse sort of range, the point for, uh, point 0.05 silicon does pretty much all of them. Maybe the point 0.3 on the wire stems, but with the carbon stems, a point, uh, point 0.5 silicon is absolutely perfect. So I've chopped three pieces of that, two little pieces, what I'm gonna say, five mil? Yeah, two five mil pieces, one 10 mil piece. Yeah, always want a load of silicon on me floats. Three's about right. And it keeps it nice for me, so I'm gonna whiz three pieces of silicon on, nice and quick. Shouldn't take long at all, that one. Where's that one? So you've got to do your best not to kink your line just so it goes in really nice all the time. And then, so some people tie the loop on at this point. I don't want to do that yet. I want to get my silicon on my flow and make sure I don't damage my line. Because if I do, I can snip it off, start again. You don't want to wet my flow and just slowly slide that silicon on. So nice and easy, trying not to damage my line. But if I do, not a problem because I'm in a position that I can still chop a bit off. So where's that on? I don't put it all the way up my float yet. I keep it at the bottom to start. So it makes it much easier to move your float up the line if your silicon's all together, rather than spacing it all the way through your float. So at first, keep it all together at the bottom. I'm gonna pull out a couple of inches of that, just to get it onto the line, and then we are good. I'm gonna get rid of that nasty bit there that I may have damaged, I haven't, but I may have damaged that a bit. So I wanna get rid of that straight away. 
and then we are left with next step is Z loop. So I'm just going to slide that float up a wee bit and I'm going to get my sensor loop tire and tie a quick loop on him. Which is lovely, quick, good to go. That's the bottom sexy part of the rig ready. So what I do like at this point and what I'm not going to do today, I'm going to tell you about hook lengths and the hooks that I'd use. Snip that on nice and flush. But I'd never want to put a hook length on my uh, loop straight away or I wouldn't want to make a rig on the bank and put a loop straight uh, hook length straight onto that loop i love it when my loop's been under tension on a winder for a little while like these may have been you see my loop's been stored on that for who knows how long and it flattens your loop a little which is lovely i mean it just creates a much more streamlined type of loop which on the underwater stuff we did this year was a massive eye opener for me in how your loops behave if they're not quite right as they sink through the water but anyway back onto the rig and i've got that made up there and I'm going to slide enough line for me to shot it completely. So I'm going to give myself about 20 odd inches between the, the loop and the float. And that's plenty enough there for me to shot it. Absolutely all of it will be completely covered. So next onto the shotting. Right, you lot, sorry to interrupt, but just quickly, if you fancy winning the exact rig that I am currently making, this one right here, I've already done it. It's like I'm in the future. But what I want to do is add in the comments what I want to hear is how many revolutions I say I've wrapped around my winder to make a full matrix top kit. But carry on watching and say, stick it in the comments and you can win the exact rig I'm making right now. Right, so shot in and say for this one, I want, I want to think about what my bait's doing. Yeah, because I'm feeding maggots, I want a fairly slow fall. You know what I mean? Them bad boys take about three months to hit the bottom on most occasions. So I need my bait to be fairly nice the way it comes in fairly natural i mean i don't want a super slow fall because it makes me inefficient and i'm not going to catch as many fish because my rig's taking so long to settle every time i put it in this is for so as i say it's for when it's good it's for that short line when they rock up we're catching loads of fish yeah, it's catching lots of fish fairly quickly but i still want a bit of a nice fall so the perfect shotting for this one is a taper i mean massive massive big fan of tapered shotting i use it for 99 percent of my silverfish fishing throughout the winter it just it gives you the best of both. I mean, big, big fan of that nice fall, but also bike magnification, showing what's going on, keeping my rig fairly stable in whatever conditions I may be using it in. It's just, it's, it's nearly me go-to shotting for everything these days. It's that good. And I want it nice and simple. So I've got this ready done. I've shotted it so I'm not slobbering all over the place for you lot. And as I say, it's a taper that keeps things really, really, really simple. As I say, with this one, we've got a 0.4 float. Yeah, so a 0.4 float in this case, in ours, with the finesse carbon slims, takes four of each. And by that I mean four number 10s, four number 9s. Yeah, and what I can use is my 10s at the bottom end of the shot in. As you can see, oh, I've got them now. They create that fairly nice fall without too much positivity at the bottom end. Yeah, still great. That number 10 at the bottom is still going to show bikes up really, really clearly on a 1.5mm hollow bristle. Yeah, plenty of bike magnification is going to show up when I put a short hook length on. But I'll talk about that in a minute. And then, as you see, the number 10s, let me get that loop out of the way. The number 10s, two inches apart. Yeah, four number 10s, two inches apart to the bottom end. So it's going to be nice and uniform with that last bit coming in once I've laid my rig in. However, above it, everything tapers and goes a little bit closer. So my four number 9s, which create the stability in the rig, they hold the rig in place while the bottom end comes in nice they taper as we go up. So I've got the first one just under two inches, the next one an inch, the one above that half an inch. You see they taper to create a nice little tight, almost a focus point where your bulk, sort of bulk, the vast majority of your shot is still in a close area that keeps that rig stable in windy conditions or when it's towing. So really, really, really simple in terms of shotting with that one. As I say, four number nines taper in and then four number tens above that, just a nice slow fall. Brings you baiting lovely. With that, I probably, I'm going to say nine times out of ten, I'd go with a four inch hook length. Yeah, hook length will be, depending on what I'm doing on the day, it could be 014, could be 012, could be 010. Yeah, all depends how good the fishing is, how big the fish are, bloody, bloody, blur. But yeah, I think I'd go with a four inch nine times out of ten. Now and again, a five if I feel like watching it a little bit more. Yeah, I might swap to a slightly longer hook length to give it a bit of a more natural fall, but I'd say a four inch hook length with that. And I'd probably, hook wise, I'd probably go with an MXC5. So when it's delicate, a 16, still a big one, an MXC5, a fairly light gauge wire that I can get away with it. So I'm talking about how I'd use it now. It's getting a little bit chilly still, just waking up. 
I'm not fishing for big weights, so an MXC5 would be about right for that. When it gets better, I want a pellet style hook, like an MXC1, you know what I mean, a standard heavier gauge round bend pellet hook if I need to pull, and that'll be suited to the elastic. I mean, I didn't want to add a hook length to it because it does change. It depends on the size of fish, the venue, how many you're catching, your elastic, all those things. But rig-wise, we're pretty much done. Let's say that one's going to be shotted with that. With the four and four, that's shotted with about five mil sticking out. So the only addition that I put on that is a little tiny fine tuner underneath that I'll put a cube shot, either a 12 or a 13, just underneath it. But I'll do that to get me bristle how I want it, depending on the conditions, and also to mark me death. But yeah, other than that, the rig is pretty much done. Only thing left to do is stick it on a winder. So really, really simple. What I'll do, I'm going to keep them silicon at the bottom end. Yeah, really, really important that. So much easier to not damage your line by having my silicon all together. Yeah, the last thing I want to do is spread it all the way through the float, which makes burning my line far more likely when I move it along. So I'm going to get our winder. Our winders, the green ones that we have, or the yellow ones, whatever you want to call it, seven inches then. So I want roughly 15 revolutions, not revelations, revolutions around the winder to create a full matrix top kit. Yeah. If I needed it, that would all depend on the flow. Yeah, with a 0.4, I'm going to be using that, say, up to five foot, so I possibly could need seven foot of line. So I'm more than happy to do that. And I'm going to put my loop on, on my pin. Big, big thing of that, using it on the keeper pins. Yeah, huge, huge thing that. The last thing I ever want to see, I've done videos in the past about it, is putting your loop around these bad boys at the end. Yeah, they are not for storing your loops on. They create a loop that curves and it's horrendous, makes your hook length nasty. Do not put it on those loops. I want it on this keeper ring, this little bad boy here that ensures I have a straight loop and actually having it under tension for a period of time makes me loop even nicer because it closes the loop up slightly while still keeping it nice and straight. So lovely, lovely thing. Make sure it's on that bad boy. And then yeah, as I say 15, so what's that? One, two, three. I'm not gonna put my float on yet. Four, five, I'm gonna put it on now. Six, seven. Make sure he's nice and central. Put me floating right in the middle. Try and rest him on the line. Then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That'll do that probably. 14, we'll go 14 and a half. And then I've already snipped this and already put a loop on it. Ready for you lot to go on. At that point, cut me line, tie another loop. And he is ready to go. Just sleep whiz him on, put him on the storer. And there you have it, a maggot rig with that. Point four, finesse carbon, ready to go to catch lots and lots of fish on maggots.